COVID, COVID, COVID-19. Initially, the first cases were found in, in Washington State, Seattle, and at that point, it seemed that the disease could be contained. By July, there were high infection rates that were spreading across the country. It popped up in New York and caused real chaos and loss. I think there was a real possibility for America to stop it at that point. The lockdown measures were so liberal and the signaling given from Trump about what measures did exist, it, it just had no effect. Skepticism, concern, doubt, worry. Last quarter, for example, the U.S. economy shrank at 33% annual clip. That's the worst we've seen since World War II. And the worst is yet to come. Now I'm subject to trying to find a job for $20 an hour because I will not be able to get my job back. In our most recent poll, we have 37% of Americans saying that Donald Trump has done an excellent or good job handling the coronavirus, while 63% he's say he's done an only fair or poor job. Almost consistently throughout this entire pandemic, there have been more Americans who disapprove of the way the president has been handling the virus. There was a moment early on, uh, in about end of February, early March, where there was action taken and Americans liked that. I stopped China from coming to the United States. I stopped Europe from coming into the United States long before the March date that you're talking about. But ever since then, as the death rates and the infection rates go up, more than half of Americans say they disapprove of the way he's been handling the coronavirus. Trump has clearly been damaged politically by the coronavirus uh, as he's battling these twin challenges, really, of a staggering health crisis and an economy that's been mostly in free fall for the last several months. It looks like we're uh, at the lower end of the curb in terms of death, which is a terrible word. I think the general perception, to be quite blunt, is that Trump's performance has been pretty abject. I would also draw a distinction between Trump himself and the administration probably have done as well as could be expected because they're, they're shooting blind. The crash would have been an awful lot worse and they'd not thrown an awful lot of money at keeping people at least getting money into their pockets. But Trump, quite bluntly, has been turned deaf. His repeated claim that the U.S. is doing just fine at dampening these infection rates, I think it's incompatible with the very sobering data that we come, see coming out of the Centers for Disease Control. If you go back to March, he was on 51%, and then by May it was about 46 But it wasn't really until late June, early July that his approvals were really tanking. There's an idea in some circles that Trump's handling of the coronavirus is a big Achilles heel for him going into the election. But to be honest, if you look at the polls, it isn't because there's not that much difference between how people regard his handling of the coronavirus and his handling of the job overall. I think for a lot of Trump voters in particular and also across the board with Republicans, the economy is a crucial issue. Millions have lost their jobs. Some have got them back as the lockdowns have, have eased. But, you know, America is now in recession. And whether they hold Trump entirely responsible for that remains to be seen. But he is chief of staff. He is the president of the United States. Trump will have to pick up whatever Trump he actually has. He can certainly claim credit for using the Defense Production Act to get ventilators into hospitals quickly. Where he has been decisive, he should make a big show of that and try and keep very quiet about his disagreement with scientists. Trump does tout probably as one of his major policy accomplishments the fact that he shut down travel from China back in January. I shut down the United States in late January, which is months earlier than other people would have done it. And he insists that saves thousands of lives. It is a decision that was lauded by Anthony Fauci. Do you think you have the energy I'm to sorry, match Donald Trump? Party. I have more energy than all of them. The main pitch from Joe Biden is that he's promising to exhibit stronger leadership, I think, on two issues. The first would just be this follow the science, take a data-driven approach, deference to experts and all the policy recommendations that 
might flow from that. I approach this with a seriousness of purpose and of mind. With the Democrats, where are they? I would make a great deal of how Trump underplayed the threat of coronavirus at the start, and I will play up how he's clashed with the scientific experts. And the critique from Democrats is that Trump has taken to actively denigrating some of these well-respected specialists in the field, like Anthony Fauci, for example. That name gets further and further away from China, as opposed to calling it the Chinese virus. His conception of the coronavirus, the way he talks about it, um, he heavily emphasizes China. This is a, a virus from China. He said that. He's used words like the China flu, the Wuhan flu, um, and Kung flu. If you ask Americans about this, um, they don't they don't like that, though there's a minority of them who admit that they've used these terms too. Trump and his team believe their own children when they attack China. Came from China. Probably for his base going on about the Chinese flu looks good, but it's not his base that he needs to win the election. Americans by and large do give China poor ratings for its handling of the coronavirus outbreak, both overall. So about two thirds of Americans say that China's done a bad job handling the coronavirus. And actually close to three quarters of Americans say that China um, is to blame uh, for the worldwide spread of the coronavirus. Before the end of the year, I predict we will have a very successful vaccine. If a vaccine does look somewhat likely, I do think that would be a major boon for Trump's re-election campaign. And the promise of this vaccine would give Trump the opportunity to reassure his constituents. Trump has almost publicly linked it to the election, pushing forward days that the vaccine's going to be available. I could imagine that Trump may get some early trial data, maybe even the complete phase three data ahead of the November election. I'm sure if he did, he would he would make the most of that. But I think that the reality is it's highly unlikely that people will be receiving this vaccine in America or anywhere else until perhaps spring of next year at the earliest. It's surprising how many people say they wouldn't take a, a vaccine. Um, we usually get about 40% of Americans saying they will get vaccinated. Fewer than that say they won't get vaccinated. And a lot of people just aren't really sure what they, what they would do. Experts in the States are very worried that the skeptic group of the population is large enough to really disrupt the distribution of a vaccine. Healthy people aren't dying. We're just getting over it like the flu. Do you see this like the flu? I see it like the flu. That's exactly what it is. It's a different type of flu. A vaccine at scale works by providing herd immunity. And you really need a, a very large proportion of the population covered to ensure that the virus is forced out of circulation eventually. So if you have 40% of people refusing to take the vaccine, that's a, an enormous problem. Republicans are optimistic that there will be a vaccine at the end of the year, whereas Democrats are a little bit more pessimistic and they're not sure there'll be a vaccine. Consequently, they're very negative about this. An announcement to breakthrough technology will only help Trump if he also turns around and says the vaccine will be free. Biden is promising to promote more consistent messaging about what Americans should do to curb the pandemic. Protect your fellow citizens. Step up. Joe Biden will just cast himself as the voice of reason and stability and say, look, 200,000 dead. That happened on Trump's watch. As long as Trump's poll numbers continue to self-destruct, Biden may just think that it's better to stay on the sidelines watch these events play out and hope he can coast to victory in November based on an unpopular incumbent. If you get the virus spreading into hardline Republican counties, it will present a problem. You could well have almost a mirror image of what happened in 2016 with the Bernie Easters not supporting Hillary Clinton. You could well have some of the most loyal Republicans actually sitting at home saying, Trump has let us down. I can't vote Democrat, but so I won't vote. Senator Harris, is it going to take a woman like you to beat Trump? In a normal election, I would say Trump has lost. But I thought Trump was going to lose in 2016, and I got that spectacularly wrong. So no pun intended. One always has to put these predictions with a massive health warning. An interesting thing is what happens in the aftermath, where it seems very unlikely that the election will be decided on election night. We may well have legal challenges, and it may be that we don't know for weeks.